Hi there, welcome to the latest Democracy for Developer blog. I am Cliff, Cliff Harris. I'm the designer and programmer on the game. And uh, we do these videos every two weeks. I'm just going to talk about what's happened in the, uh, the last update, which I've just set live now. So um, I've just released version 1.23. Um, that's just gone out just before I started doing this video. So uh, th there's a bunch of stuff that's changed and I'm, I'm gonna go through it. The biggest and most obvious thing that's changed has been we've added a new country. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. What I should point out is every time that there's a new version of the game, you will see this pop up at the top right here. Um, and that is basically asking for your priorities on um, what you think we should do. So, um, you know, if you had to choose, not saying that we won't do all of them, but it, it you know, what we tend to do is, is look at the top ones, look at the bottom ones. The top ones we definitely do, the bottom ones we get rid of, the other ones we do if we um, have time. So um, it kind of depends whatever you think is, is, is most important. We're sometimes quite surprised at what people pick, so it's really good to get people's feedback. And you get to vote once per version. Um, and it might take a few versions for us to actually do a thing that's up here but just because of the way things work. So um, the big new thing that is in this version that has, has, has taken all this time um, has been this country, South Korea. Very exciting and not just because I've watched a lot of K-dramas. Um, yeah, South Korea is an interesting choice and I'm really pleased that it's in the game. Uh, like all the countries in, in the game, it won't seem sufficiently like South Korea if you're South Korean um, until we've got a lot of feedback and gone back and revisited it several times and improved um, the settings. South Korea is a very interesting country for Democracy 4 because obviously it's a democracy, but it is uh, different to the other countries. We've got a lot of European countries um, or countries that uh, are, are very similar in terms of their economy and also their culture. Mostly because um, what we try to do is to cover the countries where people play and buy video games. Most people want to play the country they live in. Um, so obviously we have the US and the UK, uh, France, Germany, um, uh, also Canada, Australia, Spain. Um, we will have Italy. Italy will be um, the last of the countries we definitely know we're putting in. And then we might try and do something really strange um, and put in something really unusual. Um, but Korea is uh, very interesting uh, because in some ways it is very similar to the other countries in terms of um, like technological development and stuff like that. It's a very high tech country, very focused on technology, famously has really good internet speed. <laughs> um, it's, it's it's funny, it's one of those countries that if I was any good with languages, it would be a natural place for me to move to because they seem obsessed with video games and archery. And I used to do archery um, and obviously I'm a game developer. So uh, it's an interesting country, very interesting indeed. Um, obviously, it's still at war technically with its neighbor, which is strange. Um, and But culturally very different, culturally very conservative compared to the other countries. Um, that we've dealt with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up an old um, game. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with this pre-election thing just to show you something. Um, yeah, okay. So lots to talk about um, when it comes to South Korea. Um, I'm just going to like quit that. We're right before an election. So something that we did, which we haven't done with any of the other countries, um, but I thought was quite important is we've changed all of the artwork for ministers. So, um, so they actually look Korean, right? Um, because although you can look at a group of, of video game art and you can go, this person could be French, this person could be German, this person could be Australian, Canadian, whatever. Um, you can't basically have a bunch of, of white guys and say that's the South Korean cabinet. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, ideally we do, we'd have loads of different kind of like character sets of different ethnicities and, and they'd be selectable. Now we've only got two. We've basically got East Asian. Um, so if you wanted to model, um, you know, China or whatever, um, you'll be able to select that in a mod, you know. Um, so we have different character sets so that the, the, the ministers actually kind of like look believable. Um, there is one, we've got as many as we've got. I can't find the one who I really like who looks like he's in a K-pop band. 
Um, he's not there at the moment. Anyway, so the, the, this this new artwork for for all the ministers in the game. Um, this is an old version of of the game that I just loaded to demonstrate something. So the names are wrong. This is before I put in Korean names. If, I, I'll, I'll prove to you in a minute that if I start a new game, they've got Korean names because the, obviously, you know, Herbert Campbell is not a Korean name, right? Um, don't worry, that's not the final thing. Um, so anyway, so we had a new artwork put in. Um, we didn't change all the artwork for this because there's just so much of it. There are so many. There's 42 characters, and they're all really big. Um, and we can't change everything because it just becomes prohibitive. If the game becomes some huge Minecraft-like hit, then I'll get loads and loads of character art done. Um, but it's just a little indie studio, so like you know, we can't do that. Um, and with uh, the fundraisers, we've kept the um, we've kept the same artwork at the moment. Interestingly, that's Kaz Prince from Puppy Games. Uh, that's Paul Kildoff Taylor from Mode Seven. That's Mark Morris from Introversion. Uh, that's Jeff Sheen, who worked on Democracy 4 and, and designed Democracy 3 Africa. Um, occasionally you'll see me or my wife or a few other people um, who are game developers. All the donors are game developers, um, in case you didn't ever recognise any of them. Anyway, so, quite a few things have changed. These charts have changed, right? And um, you can't quite tell, but there's a little bit of, just here, there's a little bit of lighter green. Um, these charts used to be rubbish. I bought a book on how to make really good, easy to read charts. And uh, reading it, I realized that the chart that we used to have in the screen was awful. Because it used to have a line chart and then a pie chart to show the split of the line. And that's just rubbish. So now it's what you call a, like a stacked area chart. So this is all from donors. This is all from donors. Apart from at the end here, we've just started to get some minor donations from members there, implying we've got a few members. This now makes a lot more sense. And talking of which, if we go to parties to show members, these used to be dots. They used to just be like a bunch of little dots. And they would represent where on this chart from opposed to supportive every uh, theoretical voter was. Um, and I just changed them to little icons of people because they're meant to represent people. So why weren't they people instead of like little dots? It was, it was you know, it was ridiculous. Um, anyway, I think that's a bit of an improvement. Um, so that's in there. If we go back to the main screen here, so this is this is South Korea. If we look at where we are on the political compass, um, yeah, we're, we're conservative, um, and South Korea is a conservative country um, in, in, in a like cultural sense, which is quite interesting because we're normally here and maybe a little bit here, um, but we haven't been here much. Um, and I think it's interesting to have a variety and it's then it's more of a challenge if you want to take South Korea and turn it into a liberal communist <laughs> democracy um, you'll find it a bit of a challenge and and that's what the game's about right it's about changing society so um, I think it's really good that we've got that variety in here so um, yeah th things are quite different with, with, with South Korea it's a it's a very high-tech country um, and I have someone that does uh, the research, Jenny does all the research on stuff. And it's interesting some of the policies that South Korea has and that it doesn't. Um, I think it's the first country that we've represented that has national service, um, which is interesting. Um, it makes people pretty patriotic, obviously. And um, also it has um, a completely new policy and a completely new situation in here which is the threat from North Korea, which is, of course, a very real threat. I mean, like, you're, you're within missile, right? Your main cities are within missile range of a country you're technically still at war with. So um, there was a lot of uh, fiddling to uh, decide how to represent this. And so what we want is a, is a situation where, as the player, um, you are, are, are aware that you're in a country that has a threat from the North, and therefore you need a strong military. South Korea has a very disproportionately large military for a democracy. Um, so basically you have this threat from the North that will affect stability and will worry everyone. Um, and you offset that with decent foreign relations with countries like the US and so on, who will then like back you up. Um, and also military spending. And that, and that military spending is kind of keeping the threat from the North at bay. 
what this also does, it has hidden effects. It boosts the chances of cyber warfare from the north, and it also boosts the chances of uh, the event that is a foreign um, missile test, which is obviously very um, worrying um, if you live in South Korea. Uh, so that's a new, like, specific thing that is in for this country. We'll add loads of other things as well um, over time. So th th there were a few other things um, that was in there. I was speaking to people that know a lot about it and we ended up adding a um the uh where is it where's the tourism thing tourism tourism boost where is the tourism boost um there's kind of like a tourism campaign or something i can't even bother to search for it um but it's there um and also art subsidies are quite high. And this is like this thing they call the Korean wave, where they're trying to become like a, a big cultural influence. There's some interesting stuff to have a luxury goods tax. It's it's small, but it's there. Um, and there, there was some, yeah. Th so there is actually a packaging tax. So this is something that's recently in and they have that. Um, it's, it's quite interesting. Capital controls is something that they have in um, South Korea. It depends how you, um, describe these different policies but aimed more at companies than at people as i understand but capital controls is a very unusual policy that most people in the consensus of the democratic west have decided against um but used to exist when i was a kid um i think when i was a kid if my parents went on hol holiday you could only take a certain amount of money with you <laughs> the, the fear of like money leaving the country um that's the thing and like they're into their robots man uh, robotics research grants um, stuff like that um, so when you play the when you play this country it's it's kind of different it, it, it has a kind of like different feel to it um, yeah ID cards there's interesting stuff internet censorship yes yes it's a thing and and like these things all come together and that is why it's a more conservative country and if you look at um, uh, attitudes towards women and if you look at attitudes towards you know stuff like gender transition and stuff like that it is different um it's probably changing um i, I would imagine that it, it's becoming more liberal um but still it's an interesting kind of like new starting point if i just go to the election which i think is i'm going to completely crush this is like a test save game right okay uh, when i've been fiddling with stuff and balancing so don't think this is what the actual game is like right um, but I just want to point out that I've changed because I've changed something here. Um, the no going back party. Apparently we are going back. So just deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, uh, there is an interesting thing coming up. So yes, we won. Hooray. Hooray. Um, yeah, vote analysis. So this used to be dots as well. You might remember this was dots. So I changed all this. So um, so this is this is people as well. I think that makes a lot more sense. Uh, I'm just going to go to the next term to get rid of all that. Um, school inspections. Yeah, there are some cultural impacts um, in Korea because they have a real obsession with education, a massive obsession with education um, that, that feeds into the game. We've got a few like little scripts that override and create extra effects in there. Um, very obsessed with education. What was it? There was a, there was a little thing that I was going to say. Oh yeah, there, there's this other crazy thing. Um, it's interesting, like, yeah, <laughs> the death penalty, it's, yeah, it's interesting, it, it's, it's a very interesting country. I'm sure loads of people in South Korea will go, ah, oh, actually, that's not true, we don't have that, or we do have this, or whatever. Um, this is why the game's in early access, and this is why we, um, are always interested in feedback from people saying that, um, that's not the way things are. For example, um, when we did our research on South Korea, we found, um, that when we were looking up a lot of... Is there a law on this or is this allowed or permitted it seemed to be that there were a lot of laws that everyone ignored <laughs> uh, which and were not enforced which is really annoying because like technically you have to put it in but then you have to sort of put in but it doesn't actually matter um, that sort of stuff is really uh, causes chaos anyway basically the country comes along uh, comes across with a, a very strong economy I remember what it was now um, 31% debt to GDP. South Korea has very little debt compared to, to, to most countries. It's It's been run in a very kind of fiscally, um, I don't want to bias it by saying responsible, but it's been 
run in a very balanced way. Um, so it has very low debt. So um, if you look at the expenditure, debt interest, you know, normally it's one of these top ones, right? Um, yeah, very little debt interest, they don't care. You know, don't have to care because um, they don't have much debt. Something that's quite funny is the, um, the exchange rate. So, so the South Korean currency is the one, and I think a thousand won is 65 cents or 65 pence, can't remember. Anyway, so, um, yeah, and, and it, so they don't have like cents and dollars or pennies and pounds, they've just got one, and there's a lot of them. So, um, the income each quarter is 136 trillion won. I'm really glad I modeled the US first because it had debt in the trillions, very low trillions, right? Um, but um, yeah, everything's in trillions when it comes to, to, to South Korea on ones. Um, I'm slightly worried that, that I don't actually model any higher, which I think is quadrillion, um, which sounds ridiculous. I mean, imagine if, you know, if, if, if you're like a um, finance minister and sort of saying, oh, we don't want to hit a quadrillion. <laughs> We don't want to hit a quadrillion um, one debt, but they're heading towards it. Seven hundred and twenty-four trillion one. Anyway, it, it just amuses me that when you write code that, that like formats and numbers, um, and you start um, modeling some countries, you have to think beyond trillions. It kind of amuses me. So, what we're we working on next? Um, a lot of focus on late game. So. You might find that like playing the first term of a country is challenging and interesting and fun. And then beyond that, you sort of think um, it's a little bit easy. I, I'm balancing that. I don't want to hack it. I want everything to be an emergent property of an accurate simulation, which is very hard to do. Um, but I'm, we're working on that. And two things that will be coming along probably in the next update will be support for the Russian language and support for the Polish language. And we get into all sorts of interesting issues with gender and um, uh, you know various words that um, are kind of genderless in English but are not in other languages. And ah, oh, it's been a pain. Um, if you play in German, you might notice a lot of places where the, the text overlapped other areas um, is, is fixed. There were various places where, where that would happen. Um, there's been a lot of like behind the scenes little things like that going on. Anyway, so welcome to South Korea. Um, have fun. <laughs> and you know, uh, try not to ruin the economy because it's handed to you. You actually start South Korea quite popular with a great economy and everything's fine. Um, it then does sort of go downhill. But uh, it's, it's an interesting country to play and I hope you like it. I really want as much feedback as I can get, especially if you live in South Korea, obviously, or if you have lived in South Korea or you know a lot about it. Um, because like I say, we will read about what officially the status of a country is. It's a country I've never visited, but I might visit next year, um, maybe. Anyway, thank you for watching. The game's still in early access. We do these videos every two weeks. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. See you in two weeks.